Over to Japan now, where children in the town of Yamada have a school of their own once again. A replacement for the building destroyed in the earthquake and tsunami of three years ago opened in April. It's the first school in the disaster area to have been built anew. So the students have a structure in which to learn. But they still lacked another essential of childhood, a good place to play. And a group of Dutch people set out to remedy that problem. Their commitment comes from help their countrymen received from Japanese in the area 370 years ago. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. The Orandajima House opened two weeks ago. It's available to primary school students to use as they like. This facility demonstrates the strong bonds between the Netherlands and Yamada. We will take very good care of it for the benefit of the children. Martin van der Linden, a Dutch architect who's lived in Japan for 20 years, designed the center. The idea arose out of a historical incident from hundreds of years ago. A 17th century map shows the town of Yamada and the surrounding area. In 1643, strong winds and heavy rain forced a Dutch ship ashore on a nearby uninhabited island. Residents were astonished by the sudden appearance of the foreigners, but they gave them food and water. The offshore island came to be called Orandajima, meaning Dutch island. The story of what happened there has been handed down over the years. That island and the rest of Yamada took a big hit in 2011. About 45% of the houses were destroyed by the tsunami and the subsequent fires. 830 of the people living in the town either died or remained missing. When van der Linden saw the news of the quake, he wanted to do something to help. The events of 370 years ago got him thinking. Japan helped those people. Now it's, the, it's our turn, the Dutch, to help the Japanese in that small town of Yamada. And uh, I think that really was, uh, that, 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 held, that story kept in the back of our mind. Van der Linden visited Yamada less than a month after the disaster. The tragedy he found exceeded his worst expectations. There was no electricity, people were standing in line for food, people were still in shock. It was just the wrong uh, moment to, to try to do what we wanted to do. Uh, so we were, we were more like in the way than really helping. Um, and, and it did take some time for us to, to really get the project started. Why give a house, so to speak, to this town? Do something for children. That was the main purpose. Um, for children and then for the rest of the, the town of, of Yamada. But it really, we really wanted to help uh, do something for the children. A year later, he came back. The timing was better. He made his proposal, and the Orandajima house idea turned into an actual project. He wondered what sort of place would make the children happy. Van der Linden drew dozens of sketches with various options. And then he confronted a practical problem, paying for it. He and his fellow project members looked for help in Japan, the Netherlands, and around the world. A number of companies, including some from Italy and Germany, came through with offers to help. A Canadian firm provided all the lumber. Yeah, the donation is, is uh, for more wood than initially conceived, but we're, uh, we're very excited to be part of that, that project. Carpenters in Yamada were hired to do the construction work. Stimulating the local economy was part of the plan. Van der Linden personally visited the construction site throughout the process to check on the progress. His vision involved making the most of the natural warmth of the wood. The reason went beyond aesthetics. Some children in the disaster area are believed to suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. The architect wanted to make sure the children who come here find the facility relaxing. With his guidance and the cooperation of multitudes, Orandajima House became a reality.
It's a place where kids can make friends with each other and with the natural environment. Sure. When you sit here, like the, you, you slowly see the light yes. moving over the walls. Uh -huh. and, uh, ah, so as the day, the day proceeds, yes. then the sunlight changes as well. Yes. So I spend a lot of time like designing the, 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 the depth of the building and mm. the location of it in uh, relation to the lights, because I think really daylight has is, is got such a healing factor. Everything seemed to be in order, but it was the children's reaction that really mattered. <laughs> Smiles and laughter, illuminated by the sunshine, meant a job well done. The playground just outside the building is landscaped with artificial grass. A layer of mat underneath reduces the risk of bumps and bruises. Van der Linden chose a pattern of gray and white on the artificial grass to activate the kids' imagination. The stripes proved to be just right for a race. A psychiatrist who will be overseeing future activities there organized the event. Kiyoshi Sasaki believes the site will help alleviate the stress that builds up from living in temporary housing. Here, kids can let loose and run wild. They're free to jump around as they like, without having to worry about disturbing people around them. I'm sure this facility will be of great help. They came in, they immediately started to run around and turn around and use this as a swimming pool or whatever. I don't know really what to say, but uh, I'm just very happy today. So. That goes for the kids, too, the beneficiaries of a relationship that began nearly four centuries ago. Orantajima House has a music room where children can play instruments. The community radio station is in the works, too. These children are certainly young people with stories to tell and something to say.